Just getting a few batteries on charge before I run some errands. Charging v locks with some Sony MPF batteries. Got a shoot tomorrow. It's the only shoot I've got this week, so it's probably not the best time to start doing a vlog when you've got a really quiet week. But it's a job with a client who sadly don't get to work with very often, but they're really fun people to work with. And the job we're on is basically a multicam sort of cooking chef show, you could say. It's essentially at a university and we're gonna have a celebrity chef essentially surprise some of the students. So I'm gonna be using my Blackmagic Osa Mini Pro G2 as the A camera. Might be putting that on the 7200, which is always really fun because you can shoot from a distance, but use loads of foreground and get some real nice, interesting shots with that. And then we're also gonna be using my Pocket 6K Pro for the overhead rig camera. And then the agency is hiring me. I've got their own red Komodo, which matches up quite nicely with the Black Magics. Um, so that should make the post-production side of things a little bit easier. And we'll just be using EF mount lenses like the 7200 here, 50 mil, there's a 100 mil underneath there. I'm also charging up batteries for the wireless monitor, which the client will be using to see what we're shooting. The production company hiring me also will have their own transmitter system. So we'll probably be rocking two monitors so that the director and the client can see what we're both shooting. And then this is my sort of custom built charging case. It actually used to be the monitor case for this monitor. And I've now repurposed it to hold a quad V-Lock charger, two Sony MPF chargers, two Canon LP E6 chargers, and a AA and AAA battery charger. Works really well, and it also means when doing overnights or traveling, being able to just close this down and have an on-the-go charging station just makes things a lot, lot easier. I'm not having to try and stuff chargers into this bag or into another bag, just have it all contained in one. Being able to put it down in the hotel room, open it up, plug in the extension cable, and we've got power and batteries on charge. It's been a great addition to the arsenal. And for any working camera operators, videographers, filmmakers, I would highly recommend a setup like this because it just makes your life so much easier. Had a small errand to run this morning, had to post a hard drive full of footage to a client. It's a project that they were done recently for a university and the client basically just wanted to have a hard drive with all the raw footage and finished exports on it posted to them. So it's a simple little errand to run in the morning and a nice little invoice to send. Basically get to charge a full day rate to collate and back up all the footage and post it to them. So pretty easy, nice invoice to submit. Once I got back from running the hard drive errand, I basically just spend the rest of the day doing bits of admin, networking, sending some emails, doing taxes and researching bits of kit I'm looking to buy soon. And one of the emails I sent actually led to a Zoom meeting coming up this Friday. So it's with a potential client who got in touch with me a couple of months ago about a shoot and I was unfortunately unavailable, but I kept a record of that email conversation we had. And so I connected with the director who emailed me on LinkedIn, dropped him a message just saying that it'd be great to be kept in mind for future projects and things like that. And it quickly led to him sending me an email asking if I was free on Friday for a Zoom call with him and a couple of colleagues. That's an exciting little lead, potentially another client to add to the books. And this is probably one of the key things to do, right? Even though this is a quiet week and it's only one shoot this week, it's useful to spend the time off just to network and try and connect with clients or even reconnect with old clients, even contact the potential clients that you've got in touch with before and they may have got back to you. It's all worthwhile pursuing those conversations and connections because you just never know where they're going to lead. Just packing the van for the shoot, I like to load in the camera car in first down one side of the van and then use the other side to pack the rest of the bags. For a job like this where we've not been able to have a location recce or see the location beforehand, I like to overpack a little bit and just bring in an extra few lighting units to buy a few more options when we get there and just be more adaptable to the situation. So we were shooting in this kitchen space, filming two different videos all to do around cooking and the appliances used in the kitchen space for professional chefs, running two cameras at all times, 
me on the Yes Mini Pro and the agency's cinematographer on their Red Komodo. It was a very fast paced shoot and we had to act very quickly. So the lighting isn't as perfect as I would normally like it to be. But sometimes on certain jobs, you've got to pick your battles and let go of that ego and paint with more broad strokes when it comes to lighting, just so you can light a certain area or space and get the job done as quickly as possible. We used two Aperture 300Ds for the key light and the fill light, one in a softbox and one in a lantern and a 120D in the back just to act as a bit of an edge light as well as a couple of Nanlite chews on the shelves to fill in the faces of the chefs whilst they were cooking. I did try and rig up a GoPro to film some behind the scenes from the camera rig. Obviously it didn't work out and this angle isn't great. You can barely see what's on my monitor and what it is that I'm shooting. But here are just a few clips that I managed to capture from this angle. I stuck on a 7200 for most of the day and the other operator, George, stuck on a 18 to 35, I think. I really like shooting on the 70 to 200 because it just allows you to sort of snipe from afar, but also shoot through objects and creates real nice pieces of foreground that just really help create more interesting shots. On the Friday, I had the Zoom meeting with the potential client that I mentioned earlier in the video. It went really well. I got to meet with one of the directors and one of the production assistants, got to know each other a little bit and the meeting ended with me being put on their books. So hopefully there will be some future work coming my way. Then probably the most exciting part of the week was getting to go and pick up my new Sony FX6. I bought this one, used off eBay for a very, very good deal. Had very low hours, less than 100 hours of use, and was basically in brand new condition with no marks or scratches. After picking that up, I met up with my friend Ollie for a coffee. He's a director. We just chatted about some upcoming projects as well as ideas for future projects that we would like to work on together. After the coffee, I went home and got to have a play around with the FX6. I mostly spend that time just updating the firmware, exploring the menus and getting it set up to how I'd like to use it. Changing small settings such as the shutter speed to shutter angle. Getting the exposure indexes set to how I would like to use them when exposing the footage as well as changing the clip name format to my initials. It's a small feature I like on Sony cameras that you can change it from just being A cam, B cam or C cam and actually put your initials into the clip file names. It's just an easy way for clients to be able to identify who has shot the footage. So it's Saturday morning and I finalized the stuff I'm gonna take with me on my trip to San Francisco. Classic scenario, you book a little holiday for yourself and then you end up getting loads of bookings in. So I've turned down about a week of work <laughs> for next week but it's the nature of being freelance it is what it is and you've got to take these periods of time off where you can we would also like to invite active military personnel